Alrighty, guys. I'm, I just got through venting on a short video on the same car. Uh, yeah, I'm about to get on the road, go drive this. It's in for overheating. Y'all saw that short I just uploaded. Ooh, you guys are, are brutal, boy, in the comment section. I love the uh, the communication, but some of you guys, <laughs> the one guy suggested just just throw the whole car away. It's like, dude, it's a 2010 PT Cruiser with 30,000 miles. He suggests we throw the whole car away just because I'm contemplating suggesting replacing the timing belt based on the age of the belt. Okay, sure, that belt is not worn out. But I talk about, I brought up the fact that tires can dry rot with low miles on it. My tires on my truck, uh, my red truck, I hardly ever drive it. But I got to replace those tires every time it's time for me to drive it because the tires got major cracks in it from the sun and it's just dry rotted. Then some guy will bring up, well, the timing belt is not exposed to any of that stuff. Hey, man. And then I had to clear up a fact that, uh, you guys are criticizing shops or criticizing mechanics for technically doing their job. Yes, guys, it's okay for a shop to uh, suggest to their employees, it's called rules, it's called shop rules, suggest it to their employees that they look a car over. Now that I got some time, I can touch on it. Looking a car over simply means if the car come in for something simple like an oil change, yes, look it over. If I see fluid all on top of this, if I see a leak, it will be crazy for me not to mention that that's not an upsell technically that's a uh, letting you know that i see a problem now i think a bunch of those comments are coming from guys that have been burnt yes guys it's some it's some shady shops out there i'm not defending all the shops okay i can't defend the shop i don't work at <laughs> yeah okay we don't practice those we don't you know condone in those practices we only gonna upsell um you know you see stuff like this a mechanic would typically try to upsell a battery service. Now, you may go, ain't nothing wrong with my battery. Dude, it ain't got nothing to do with what's wrong with your battery. Corrosion is starting to build up. So in order to prevent that, we need to perform a battery cleaning service. All right? That is a legit upsell, right? Notice, it didn't come in for that. But I see it. Because I'm getting ready. Just say if it came in for oil change. I'm just touching on simple stuff. A lot of guys will. Like I just say. They would just simply say. Ain't nothing wrong with my battery. No. Decline. And then two weeks. Two months later. The corrosion done build all the way up. And then they. Go, Why you didn't say something? So you just can't win with some. I don't know man. Some customers have been burnt. From other previous shops. So they on a the defensive end. No matter what you recommend. They're going to automatically be on a defensive end. But yeah, this is not a bad looking. Uh, I wonder if uh, PT Cruiser, PT Lover, damn, he was he a friend of mine on Facebook. I can't, d what, damn, what's his name? Lowe's or something like that. I forgot your name, buddy. But uh, I was wondering if you still had your PT. This is a 2010. In fact, guys, this is overheating. Matter of fact, let me get down to. I I'm about to get on the road, but before I do, I want to make sure I got fluid in it because overheating. Look at take a look at that fan. Yes, it's being replaced. So I'm going to start the car and turn the AC on, see if the fan come on. I'm doing preliminary stuff before I get on the road because the customers say it overheats at highway speeds. And guys, think about this for a second. At highway speeds, what's going on? You don't even need the fan at highway speed. Ram air is blowing, ramming into your radiator. You're condensing your radiator. <laughs> so technically, you don't need the fan at all. So... If you overheating at highway speeds, you're building up some pressure. All right, I'm not gonna yell out head gasket. <laughs> I've, I've stopped doing head gaskets on these about a decade ago because I realized uh, this soft aluminum head will give you more problems than that multi-layered steel head gasket. Okay, think about this for a second. Multi is is three or four different layers. It's a head gasket, but it's multi-layered steel. This soft aluminum head will warp and give out before that multi-layer steel gasket was. So a lot of guys was, you need a blow head gasket. Got to blow. You need a head gasket. I've seen guys take the head off. You know how much trouble it is to get this damn head off. I've seen guys take this head off, simply yank out the old gasket, clean it up, put a new gasket on it, put it back in, give it to the customer. Three days later, doing the same thing. <sighs> guys, when you're dealing with aluminum, you gotta understand how aluminum <laughs> react to overheating to retracting okay uh 
it, you know, it changed position. It'll never, once the cylinder head, aluminum part cylinder head overheats, it will never go back to normal. Okay? It tends to expand, retract, expand. It'll never go back to normal. You will have that nagging overheating problem forever. So, in that case, uh, I just simply uh, write up cylinder heads. Um, because this is cast iron, this is still block made it to aluminum cylinder heads. It's not like a like the V6, like the Pentastar that has uh, aluminum heads and a block. Yeah, they, those get engine. They get some major overheating going, but you can get away with just a head on on this. Now we don't even do those guys. They tell us um, any overheating, they need an engine. Hey, shop, man, y'all gotta understand, man. Shops are not finna be liable. Shops already gotta deal with incompetent mechanics. That's why shops are hiring guys with experience. A newbie mechanic, I'm going to tell you this. I'm running out of time. I'm going to tell you this. A newbie mechanic would get this car in, listen to the symptoms, assume we need a head gasket, write up a head gasket. Think about this for a second. A service advisor that communicates with the customer, he's also a newbie. <laughs> so he's like, okay, if you say so. So they call the customer, tell him you need a head gasket. They sell it. Oh, my goodness. All right, the mechanic go out and do it. All right, he get he gets the head gasket out. He don't see no flaws in the head gasket. It's all intact. Well, I don't know what else it could be. Let me go ahead on with the job. Finish up. He put it on, complete the job, and they deliver it. They don't even drive it to make sure it's still not overheat. They deliver it. You talking about an ugly, ugly transaction, guys? An experienced guy that's saying what I'm saying and I'm already seen, been through the trenches. That's why experience Trump. New guys with certificates and all that. Experienced guys so much better, in my opinion. I'm, I'm talking from my opinion standpoint. But no, we're not doing no stupid head gasket over here. Never again. Okay, I'm done forever doing head gasket only repair jobs. Unless it's leaking. Like, if I put pressure on it and I see coolant spitting out of the head, between the head gaskets and the, and the head and the block, and I ask the customer, and she, you know she's saying there was no sign of overheat nowhere. Yeah, that can be a a failed leaking head gasket. Okay, but I don't do head gaskets anymore. Yeah, I'm just that's just something. That's a personal thing. It's nothing against uh, anything or anybody. But guys, let me go. I got coolant. I got oil. Yeah, so I'm gonna I gotta try to duplicate this. Let me go drive this thing. If I can't duplicate, I'm not gonna just say you probably need such and such. No, <laughs> that damn coolant hand have will have to go to the H for me to recommend any kind of repair. Long goings are the days where yeah, you probably just need this. When in fact this that so called this you speaking about is like two or three grand. No. Oh my goodness, I have changed so much over the years as far as how I go by diagnosing cars no more. It's called uh, experience learning. Yeah, but this is a, what a key it. This is a nice ass car. Let me see how it sounds. Oh, I'm over my time limit. Where's the freaking key? Let's see something. 145,000 miles, little belt squeak. Yeah, the only way you go, the only way you can diagnose, the only way you should go by diagnosing anything is first of all duplicating it. Okay, I just started up, so naturally it's not going to be in the hot. I'm about to get on the freeway, guys. I can't record and drive, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, I'll let y'all know my finding via, via a shorts video. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all love them shorts video, but every now and then I got to squeeze in some long videos. All right, so let me let this hood down and go test drive this car, man. Thanks for watching. Oh guys, I am driving this PT like I said. I know you ain't supposed to be filming and driving, but real quick, this is a short video. Oh guys, y'all see the miles on it now as opposed to the miles when I left. Guys, look at the temp hand. I cannot get it to go past halfway mark. What that tells me is I can't duplicate it. Now the complaint is overheating while I'm driving on the freeway. I'm on the freeway. I can't get it to uh, overheat. I'm not going to just make up something, okay guys? I need y'all to get out of the habit of doing that. If you can't duplicate a customer's concern, don't just make up an estimate. Don't just say, well, a thermostat would cause that, a coolant flush would cause that, a water pump would cause that. I have the heater on high, guys. My heater is high, which tells me my water pump output is sufficient, okay? You will not get heater output if your water pump is not doing its job. Now, the radiator clogged, perhaps, but I need to first duplicate the concern. It's not overheating. What do y'all want me to do? I'm not going to make up something. Let me go back and tell the customer.